Greetings to everybody. Welcome back to the shop. Hope everybody's doing well with this pandemic or whatever. Um, for this video, if you enjoy watching machining and are, you're interested in how I do things on the mini mill, this video is definitely for you. Um, so hopefully I'll see you guys next Friday project at hand is I have two 3018s. One is with the motor, it's the CNC. The other one um, has got the laser on it. Now the CNC one table, I made my own T-slot nuts here. And I don't have the clamps over here, but I have, what, 1032 screws. Nice and long, I can capture anything and everything I want. The 3018 with the laser came with this wacko stuff. The T slots are completely different. This slides in there, but these aren't long enough to really hold things. So I was thinking about making these T slot nuts that size, teeny thing. I did a drawing, it's like ridiculous. Um, was gonna use this guy not much to remove but the thickness is like right on it so I don't have you know I'm gonna put it in there and machine that side machine that side um, but then when I flip it over to do these 45 chamfers I don't have much here to hang on to so that one was out and I went to my favorite metal supply and got this guy so I clean up the sides to get it to width and I can cut the channel deeper so that I have something to hang on to. Then I can um, cut the chamfers, but I'm pretty sure I can hold it in the vise this way now to take the height down or just let it poke up a whole bunch. I'm going to take it down some and leave... Eh, how did I even do this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duh, because it's flat, and then I just put it on parallels and did the grooves, and I'm done. So, this one, once I do the chamfer, I cannot put it back in the vise to hold it. Um, maybe I could. And it probably might be safer. i got to check to see the height of my parallels, whether I can do it. But um, that's what I'm planning on doing here. I know the light's not that hot, but it uh, looks like it just make it. Because you know, I'm clamping it in there and pushing it down hard on the parallels and I can catch it. So it's a few thousands higher. So I was thinking, take the whole thing down to width and then the height up here. Um, then I can put the whole thing in there. I'll have a long edge to clamp on and I can do, oh, can I do the chamfer? No, I can't. I have to do the chamfer before um, taking it. So I do the width, do the width, then do the chamfer on the bottom. Then I can stick it in here because I'll have plenty to hang on to the whole length. Then I can do the actual height and then do the uh, groove slot, whatever you want to call it, you know, cut, cut that part out on both. Then I can separate it and clean up the edges and stuff and I'll be done. So, wow. Just makes it by luck. Just need to cut it to length with a little bit extra on it here. All right, bring this in as the saw blade comes down by itself yeah a little bit extra I'm doing on the length so when I cut it off there I want them to be about seven hundred thousandths long so that should do it here put my weight up there and go love this uh, goes through it pretty darn quick you can probably see the blade going down there, oh, wow. More than half, 
three quarter down. Nice, just need to clean it up now. All right, experiment just to see how good these DROs are, how accurate I can get. I've already um, finished off what's now the bottom side of this, cleaned off the top, took it out, measured the thickness. So I need to go down 98 thousandths so that the thickness is uh, 395 thousandths. I'm down 69, so 79, holding my hand here to keep chips off the floor, which isn't working that well. So I'm planning on doing the 98,000, take it out and see if I hit 395, 79, yeah. I'm gonna have to sneak up on it because I don't want to do you know, a 10,000 cut as the final cut. But, all right, so that's uh, 79, 89, 89 right there. Because I know it's going to drop now. I'm staying holding at 89. Probably do a couple of thousands cut, huh? I could do the whole thing. 90, 98,000, right. Uh, so I got a 95. That way if it accidentally drops. Alright, 95 coming up. Three, four, there's 95. So you got a final three thousandths cut. <laughs> Still holding that 95. <laughs> Why don't you drop on me? If I try to lock the head up, it'll move it. It does just a hundred every time. All right, 98, here we go. Six, seven, and one more thou. H, please hold there. Holding it. Bring the calipers over. It should be 395,000. So there it is. Still holding it, 98. Still holding it, yay. All right, done, huh? Yep. There it is. All right, go get the calipers over here. Put the mic down. Just a second. All right, put the mic back on. What a nice mess. <laughs> well, just unlock it and measure it. Let's see what happens. Hopefully you guys can read what it is. And turn it on, and I'm at 395 thousandths. Uh, can, uh, can you guys see that in this bad lighting? Like, turn the other light on. The overhead light. Not bad at all. Urk. Tilt it. So, right on it. Just have to deburr it now. Probably not the best view and lighting for you guys, but... I figure I'll just sit here with a magnifying glass until it just touches. Zero out the DRO. Go as slow as possible, right? I gotta be really close. Wow. How close is it? Easy. I'm looking till I just see some chips, some dust coming off of it. That might be it. Nope. Wow. I am just slowly cranking this in. There, I saw one chip. That's it, right there. Alright, zero out everybody. Yep, that's definitely nice. Okay, so go in, uh, 
Ten thou, I guess. Ten. Oh. Conventional. I gotta take the speed up here. And I left it hanging out of the edge of the vice, so I, if I have to, I can measure or do something here. Alright, well, so far so good, huh? Probably do a lot of this off camera here. I'm sure it's boring as I'll get out. All right, let's do, uh, get up all the way, huh? Oh, I don't want to move that. I want to move this, another 10. All right, so we're at 20 thou right there, huh? And I just want to come around and kind of look at it here compared to the uh, actual part that came with the machine. I did put a 45 up against the table on it to verify um, this is a 45 chamfer, so how does that look so far? Not even close, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, I guess I'll just go in 10 this way. Uh-oh. Great. My uh, DRO just jumped. I was at 20 thou and it's safe reading 0.299. All right, put it back to 20 thou. Touch it. Where is it? Uh, oh, I hit this. Uh, 0.02. Set dimension. Okay. Okay, uh, like I said, I'm gonna do this off camera. Here's the last 5,000. <laughs> And they do look like pretty much of the same amount. Kick will be, do I have enough left to put this over and clamp it? That's the unknown. Let's clean this up a bit here. <laughs> Back it up a bit. Yeah, it's not clearing it. So, oh, I don't have the thing over here to compare anymore. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. I'm not get back. Yeah, it looks pretty darn right on it. Well, now until I get over to the bench under the bigger magnifying glass and see, but. I just want to see if I have enough to clamp on. These are the highest parallels that I've got. Will it clamp? Yes. No. Wow. Just barely. Oh boy. Uh, so I may have to flatten it out or do something here. Let's see. Thought I'd try to zoom in and show a close up. Making some chips here. Almost at height. I'm taking it down to uh, ten thousandths at a time, which is kind of risky when I don't have that much hanging on. I'm at ninety thousandths to taken off already, and here's a hundred. <laughs> so almost down to height, we're going to start cutting the two grooves here for the teeth part. What am I at? 1500 RPM doing this. And this is my nice four aluminum, three flute, uh, half inch end mill. Alright, let's go the other way. Yeah, it's looking pretty darn close.
This is where a CNC would have been nice. Just tell it go back and forth a bunch. I have to start writing my code as a loop where I can just enter the variables in and say go and do it. So pretty fun, pretty fun. Well, I wanted to show the last pass cut in this slot. This needed to come down to 250 thou. DRO said I had five thousandths to go, but I calipered this before doing that cut, and it said I had thirty thousandths to go. So I did the five thousandths anyway. Now I caliper it and I'm right on the money. I'm at 250, so go figure. I thought maybe my math was off or the DROs or something, but no, turns out right. So now it's a matter of just seeing if it fits. I hope. <laughs> deeper it but wow that's pretty darn dinky <laughs> but nice so let's go over and see big moment let's see if I did it right as it go in and I have it upside right no it doesn't huh what am I doing wrong yeah it's not going in it's right on the other side where I can see what I'm doing Oh, it goes in. All right. Oh, boy, is that tight. Why is that tight like that? I guess something I've got to take down further. I can probably lap some of it from here. Oh, it's the end of it. It's got a burr. And it slides nicely, and then it jams. Okay, there's a burr on the end. Wonderful. All right. So now... I'm going to clamp it that way because I'm going to drill so I'm pushing down. So put it back in upside down. I'm going to drill and tap the four holes and then I can cut it um, into four pieces and clean it all up. Not sure if I ever showed lapping before but yeah huge sheet of what is this 600 grit and I always put WD-40 on it. Oh, I forgot to shake it up. WD-40 on it because it floats all the particles. You know, I should have worn gloves, but whatever. Because there is a burr on this top. Well, I'm going to hold this. But you can get ridiculous finishes. All the machine marks gone. I can hear it already. We took it off. So, still garbage on it. So, I'm not really going to lap this that much. It doesn't count to have a gorgeous finish. Boy, it got itself all down in the side grooves everywhere. I don't know, maybe I will take it all the way down. They're really nice. <laughs> it might fit better. But, wow. Yeah, it looks pretty darn nice. Yeah, I guess I'll put gloves on and have at it. Because there's some sharp edges here. Break all the edges and stuff. So there it is. Kind of lapped up. I did decide to take another five thousandths off of each side. So it wobbles nicely in there now. It's, it's nice. Broke sharp edges. 1032. Everything works really nice and smooth. And so, good. And I did use the, the eye loop here to actually try to figure out the dimensions and angles and all that stuff. And they work nicely. Millimeters, but you can convert it. So I just need to cut it now. And, you know, it'll be cut in the middle here, so it'll be six tenths wide. Um, cut, and I'll lose three hundred thousandths off each edge here, but big deal. So, pretty happy with the results, and now I've got something taller, and I can use all my existing 3018 clamps. <laughs>